Dr. Jerry Purnell, Tim Powers, Mike Resnick, Christine Catherine Rush, Brandon Sanderson, Dr. Robert J. Sawyer, Charles Sheffield, Robert Silverberg, Dean Wesley Smith, Theodore Sturgeon, K.D. Wentworth, Dr. Sean Williams, Jack Williamson, and Roger Selasny. Chernick, Lazarus Chernick, Cerullo, Winston DeFate, Leo and Diane Dillon, Dave Dorman, Bob Eggleton, Will Eisner, Larry Elmore, Frank Frasetta, Frank Kelly Fries, Dr. Laura Fries Baraha, Jack Kirby, Valeki Lindan, Paul Lear, Ron Lindan, Stephen Martinier, Gary Meyer, Judith Miller, Mobius, Cliff Nielsen, Mike Perkins, Sergey Koyakov, Rob Pryor, Sean Tan, H.R. Van Dongen, and Stephen Yule. <laughs> Here and all of the fancy arts community 
it's a big family, and they've always been nothing but welcoming and encouraging, and they've never once told me, even when I was a young student, you know, that this wasn't possible. They just said, get out there and work hard. So thank you very much. Nobody makes it to a point like this, to any point of, uh, of uh, success alone. But if you're really lucky, you get a note like this to say thank you. So, here we go. <laughs> to begin with, you got to start with author services, judges, <coughs> for putting this entire thing on, for bringing us out here for a week, for teaching us all the, the secrets for the past 35 years of paying it forward to, uh, I was going to say young writers, but I don't quite call them that. It's called the next generation. Um, and um, so thank you to all of you for that. I mean that from the heart. It's a sheer honor to me. And uh, there's a few people I need to thank without whom I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be the person I am. I hope you will play the music, there's a lot. <laughs> I need to thank Sarah for always being there, uh, Bear for always pushing me to do better, Alex for giving me the opportunity, and uh, I need to thank my two mentors, Duncan Bear, especially Duncan Bear and Todd Lockwood, uh, it would have been endless help. And of course, my family, and to thank my uncle who gave me my first fantasy novel all those years ago and, and set me off on my journey. Out of pure necessity, nicknamed. Wow, well, of course, there are far too many people to thank. We be here until breakfast, and I, I don't know that the tag name has that lined up for us, so although dinner is good enough, I really, I would not. <laughs> of course, I have to thank my parents. Uh, without them, not only might I not be here, I wouldn't be anywhere. <laughs>
five years, I have been trying to win this contest. Thank you. I love this contest. I have always loved this contest. I love this contest because it celebrates excellence in writing and in art. And I want to thank Al Swan for creating such a beautiful work of art that illustrates the concepts of my story. But I also love seeing new writers being discovered and being energized by this to launch their careers. Many of my friends have launched their careers through this contest. I was going to say thank almost everybody in Author Services because they are so nice. But I thought I'd do this to tell you about something that you don't get to see, but we did. And that was that they do a reveal, an art reveal. And you would think this is the most exciting thing for us as writers and artists. But when I walked in that room, around the whole perimeter were all of the people in author services, all of them lined up standing there. They were like parents waiting for their kids to open up their Christmas presents. <laughs> Every single one of them. And I missed my art. I didn't see any there. I was feeding off all of them because I'm an idealist champion. And it's like, this must be really important to these people. <laughs> look at the energy and how they feel about us. And it really impressed me. And then I circled back around. It's like, they're super duper mover. <laughs> I love seeing the feelings that they had for us. And I want to live in a universe where writers and artists are lifted up to such a high level. Thank you all who made this book possible for me to be standing here. So thank you, and I'm honored to be here. Please congratulate. I'd also really like to thank uh, ASI and Alan Hubbard and all of the lesson judges for coming out here to see us. And to uh, David and to and Scott. I can't believe I got to meet all of you and to learn so much. Uh, but this is a really twisted person. So, <laughs> which one is it? Who's I didn't guess you. It wasn't you. <laughs> uh, thank you for your brilliant, brilliant, brilliant uh, rendition of my story. To my father, for taking the time to understand a dream that had no relation to anything in his own life, just because that dream was his daughter's. I didn't expect this. This is kind of a trick. Um, I want to start by thanking Bruce, one of last year's illustration winners, for telling me about this, and I'm going to have some words with him because he didn't really let me know what this was going to be. <laughs> so it was the author services email that said, tux fitting, that it kind of went, what, 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 what? what? for the story. This is, this is a good story. It was, uh, I just want to say that like art makes art, and you never know where inspiration is going to come from. So every time somebody writes something amazing, or draws something amazing, or dances, sings, whatever it is, it inspires other people and makes them want to do something kind of crazy and a little scary and maybe not the best financial choice. It all really snowballs and pays it all forward. So really, thank you to all the services for putting us on. Thank you for all the amazing judges for all sharing their time and their wisdom with all of us. It's largely about uh, those choices that we make that completely change the trajectory of our lives. Uh, and I made one of those choices uh, a couple years ago when I decided I want to be a writer. And I wouldn't be able to be here tonight uh, to accept this uh, without my wife Eleanor, who has been endlessly supportive to superhero levels uh, as I chase this dream. Um, so I thank my parents uh, for watching tonight. Um, they've also been incredibly supportive as I, you know, switch career paths here and, and uh, chase this thing down. Um, you know, uh, I also want to shout out to my little daughter Piper. Uh, she's one. She's an endless source of inspiration every single day. Um, and uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, just an amazing piece of art. Uh, I've had an incredible week meeting uh, some, some mind-blowingly talented writers uh, and artists, um, people I hope to um, you know, uh, learn from uh, the rest of my career. Born in Lithuania.
currently residing in Paris. So I'd like to thank my I'd like to begin, indeed, by thanking you. I'd like to thank uh, a number of people, uh, a support network of friends, and two special friends in particular, Chris Taylor Firth and Dave Slogett, who have always believed in me, and I really appreciate that, guys. I'd like to thank my family, uh, John and Bell, my children, Matthew, Jamie, and Sophie, and most of all, my wife, Vanessa, who is the one person who's kept me sane, uh, particularly at times where the world has seemed a bit bonkers. She's been there for me. Thank um, Mitch Pure, who picked me up from the airport. Sometimes <laughs> looking for me, I'm looking for him. It was chaotic. We were communicating with all the emails because my French number didn't have any service. To do what I want to do, to create as much as I want to create, anything I want. Just gave me everything, it gave me their whole life, lives. Um, I love them both very much. My grandma has passed away a year a year ago, and uh, I'm sure uh, if she could see me here now. She would be uh, very very ecstatic. So uh, here's to you, grandma. So respected on that, I have been a judge for 32 years. So here we are. So I take a cue as far as awards go, like this. I, I take a cue from the great director Francis Ford Coppola, who said in an interview recently. When you're young and you get fired for stuff later in life, they give you lifetime achievement awards for that. Because you did things a little different and you didn't fit in. Well, here I am. All right. Actually, I believe we're all, we all are creative. I was born creative. Um, I knew at a very young age what I wanted to do. I knew at four years old what I wanted to do. Um, when I first uh, saw some great things of fantastic nature. I said, this is what I'm going to do. But I just believe that it gets drummed out of you as, at a very early age, people want you to conform and fit in, and, they, and no matter what, square peg, round hole, square peg, round hole, rinse, repeat, that kind of thing. <laughs> Mexican native, Jennifer. Uh, yes, yeah, so I would like to uh, thank, uh, um, I would like to thank the judges, um, David Wilton, Tim Howells, Hard, your, um, your advice has been invaluable. Um, it was wonderful to sit through the workshops and hear all of your uh, wisdom and also discover that you go through the same <laughs> chasm of despair that all writers kind of go through. I would like very much to thank uh, the writers who I have met. Um, you guys, you're actually quite good. I don't know if anyone's told you that yet, but there you go. Um, yeah, I would also like to thank my parents. Uh, you two are also quite good. I also wanted to thank my friends and family, especially my parents, for supporting me and helping me um, pursue my passions. Without them, I wouldn't be here today, so thank you. The illustrator of this story. And I'd like to thank my mom, who's out there watching, uh, for the ego to write and to submit. So uh, thanks, Mom. And um, I'd also like to thank Galaxy Press, Author Services, and Ellen Hubbard for giving me the opportunity to use the uh, science fiction and the ego to actually do something cool. <laughs> and of course, you know, there's new friends. All of my fellow writer winners have been fantastic. It's been great meeting you guys. All the judges who have taught me so much just in the past week, I don't know how I'm going to process all of it going forward. Um, I would also like to thank Mitch, who has been ferrying us around the airport and if you guys have been on the roads in here in LA, you know what a feat that is. Good evening. I am incredibly honored to be here tonight. Um, when I first got the call from Joni telling me that I was one of the winners, um, I kept expecting her to bring me back the next day saying, actually, we made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, that didn't happen. That would have been awkward. Um, and as a result, I am able to participate in this incredible competition. Um, I got to learn from artists that I greatly admire, and I got to meet the privileged to know you. I'm also grateful for everyone at Author Services, for their hard work in organizing this competition, and for the judges for giving me this opportunity. And last but not least, I'd like to thank my parents who are here tonight for not panicking too much when I told them I wanted to pursue art. 
now resides in California. You finally made it up here. Wow. <laughs> first science fiction book when I was about 14 years old. I don't think she realized she was creating a monster. Just in about two years, I had about 200 books in my room. My dad walks in, couldn't believe that, couldn't see the walls anymore, and says, we have to throw away all these books. My mom says, don't you dare. So I want to thank my dad for not throwing away my books. I'd like to thank my family and friends, some of whom are here tonight, I think, just to see me in a tuxedo. <laughs> and of course, my fellow winners couldn't hope to meet a greater bunch of people, lifelong friends for sure. And I got 12 rejections. I gave up. I gave up on my lifelong dream to become a science fiction writer. I sold all my books. The only ones I kept were the eight volumes of the Writers of the Future contest, which I actually wept as I boxed them up and put them in the closet. Couldn't give them up. Fast forward about 17 years. I was getting old, and I realized my dream of becoming a science fiction writer was slipping away from me. So I immediately decided, I'm going to start again. I'm going to give it a try. The first thing I did, of course, was look up the Writers of the Future contest and was delighted to see what was still going on. And I uh, came upon this thread about not giving up. But that's right up my alley, let's check this out. <laughs> One guy said, don't worry, I would never give up. I've heard the story of Topanga Canyon. I got a cold chill. <laughs> I'm like, what's the story about Topanga Canyon? Turns out, this comes from a workshop taught by Dean Wesley Smith, one of our esteemed judges, about the importance of not giving up. He talked about a writer named Topanga Canyon, uh, who all the editors were actually talking about. In half year, so a huge shout to Dean, for Dean Wesley Smith, for bestowing him with that secret identity. <laughs>
walked up to folks, you know, which, which story did you write? We tell them, and they go, oh, yeah, I remember that one. And I can't remember I wrote. <laughs> but what makes this the, the, the greatest honor for me, and it's just incredible, are the, the rest of the cohorts and the company that I've been permitted to keep this week and the company that the Famicom Drive has found itself in. That's the test. That's what makes this feel like it's worth everything in the world is to look at the stories that are in that anthology along with mine and to take those as the standard to which it has been held and, and found sufficient. It's just unbelievably humbling to, to look at these people who are the writers for the future, be counted among them and be able to look forward to what they and we are going to go on to do next. So, together, let's plan for another 35 years of success and positive effects upon the world based on the vision of the amazing writers and artists we discover every single year.